Hello everyone. In this session, I will demonstrate you the clavicle. This is the clavicle also known as the collar bone. It is a typical long bone and it is the only long bone that lies horizontally in our body. It is also subcutaneous throughout. It supports the shoulder so that the arm can swing freely away from the trunk and it also helps in the transmission of weight from the upper limb to the sternum. The clavicle because it is situated horizontally so it has two ends. This is the medial end which is larger and this is the lateral end which is smaller and flattened from above downwards. So there are two ends medial and lateral end and between the two ends there is a shaft this is the shaft which is curved so that in the medial two-third it is convex forward and in its lateral one-third it is concave forward. The medial end is larger and quadrangular and it articulates with the manubrium sterni to form sternoclavicular joint. The articular surface also extends on the inferior aspect of the medial end which will articulate with the first costal cartilage. The lateral end is flattened from above downwards and here it has a facet which articulates with the acromion process to form the acromioclavicular joint. Coming to the shaft, the shaft is divided into medial two-third, this is medial two-third and lateral one-third. Now in the medial two-third of the shaft, it is rounded as we can see here so that there are four surfaces anterior surface which is convex forward the posterior surface which is concave backwards then there is a superior surface and at the medial end of superior surface the area is rough and there is an inferior surface so there are four surfaces in the medial two-third of the shaft whereas the lateral one-third of the shaft is flattened from above downwards so that there are two borders anterior border which is concave forward and this is the posterior border which is convex backwards this is the superior surface which is subcutaneous and on the inferior surface we can see a tubercle this tubercle is known as conoid tubercle. So this is the conoid tubercle. And from the tubercle there is a ridge running laterally. This ridge is known as trapezoid ridge. So that is the trapezoid ridge. So the conoid tubercle and the trapezoid ridge are present on the inferior surface of the lateral one third of clavicle. Also seen in the middle one-third of the inferior surface of the shaft, there is a longitudinal groove which is known as subclavian groove. So this groove here is the subclavian groove. So, so to determine the side of the clavicle, we must know first the larger quadrangular end is a medial end. So keep it medially, whereas the lateral end is flattened from above downwards and the shaft is curved S shaped and we keep in such a way that the medial two-third of the shaft is convex forward and concave backward whereas the lateral one-third of the shaft is concave forward and convex backward whereas the subclavian groove is present on the inferior aspect of the middle part of the shaft and along the lateral aspect of the along the lateral one-third of the shaft inferiorly there is a conoid tubercle and trapezoid ridge. So this clavicle is the left clavicle. This is the right clavicle in which this larger end medial end place it medially which will articulate with the manubrium to form sternoclavicular joint and the lateral end is flattened which will articulate with acromion to form acromioclavicular joint and if we see the shaft the medial two-third is convex forward concave backward and the lateral one-third is concave forward and convex backward whereas present on the 
inferior surface of the lateral end we see conoid tubercle this is the conoid tubercle and trapezoid ridge which is going laterally so keep it inferiorly on the lateral one third of the shaft so this clavicle is the right clavicle now coming back to this left clavicle the main attachments on the clavicle the margin of the articular surface on the medial end gives attachment to the fibrous capsule of sternoclavicular joint all around superiorly to the interclavicular ligament and posterior superiorly here to the articular disc around the margin of the articular facet on the lateral end there is attachment of the fibrous capsule of acromyoclavicular joint the anterior surface of the medial two third of the clavicle gives origin to pectoralis major muscle whereas the medial end of the superior surface which is a rough area gives origin to clavicular head of sternocleidomastoid muscle on the medial end of the inferior surface there is attachment of costoclavicular ligament whereas the subclavian groove receives insertion of subclavius muscle the margin of the groove gives attachment to clavi pectoral fascia coming to the lateral one third of the shaft the anterior border gives origin to deltoid muscle whereas the posterior border receives insertion of trapezius muscle on the inferior surface the conoid tubercle gives attachment to conoid part of coracoclavicular ligament whereas the trapezoid ridge gives attachment to trapezoid part of coracoclavicular ligament so this completes our general features site determination and main attachments on the clavicle thank you